All right. So 218 has this interesting 30 degree ellipse. And when I first saw it in this uh, this book, uh, you know, however long ago now, I had to go on Google and type in 30 degree ellipse, and uh, didn't really connect uh, what it was um, uh, what it was doing or how it how it's generated. Uh, but basically, the definition is that half of the major axis is the minor axis. So your minor axis uh, is take the 140 divided by 2, minor axis will be 70. Major axis 150 divided by 2, 75 is the minor axis for the vertical. Um, thought about the way that that works and looked through some of the old drafting books and remembered that I had one of the ellipse templates with all of those different uh, different size ellipses and how they're um, how they're generated so just for uh, for quick reference uh, where this definition uh, comes from is let's just go ahead and generate a cube and two should be fine oh, got out of it let's go ahead and extrude it two all right so if i'm looking at this cube and we draw a circle and we need three points or yeah let's just go with three points we'll go tangent tangent and tangent nope too many things okay let me have it there we go all right, so we have a circle, and as you rotate that circle around, it gets a little bit, no, okay, we're going to have to extrude it. I can't see it on mine. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it on yours. So let's make it just a little bit bigger. All right, so it goes from being a circle, and as we start generating the ellipse, as you come around to a, um, a certain angle, and it's still not quite in the light, so I wonder if my light source is over this way. That looks a little better. So we're seeing that this gets uh, staying in the same height, but it's getting narrower across the, the minor axis. So as this cube rotates 45 degrees, 30 degrees, 15 degrees, you're going to see the, um, the ellipse based on its geometry. So if we take that measurement, and we were to project it into a sketch on that 30 degrees, we would measure the, um, the overall height, the major axis, and we'd be able to measure from the, the points on the minor axis, and that would give us our formulas for how to calculate those, um, how those, um, uh, that 30 degree ellipse. Basically, what it amounts to is go to Google, search it, search for 30 degree ellipse, get the chart, and it will, um, uh, it will tell you uh, a lot easier than generating a, a cube with a, uh, a circle on it. All right, but that's pretty much the, the background where it originates, and I always um, thought that was kind of interesting the, uh, when, when I actually sat down and thought about it, uh, which way the, uh, the geometry, how the, uh, how the geometry was generated. All right, so get that out of the way. Make sure I'm in the front plane. And we're going to be doing kind of the, the same things with the, um, uh, our decisions are going to amount to, do I need to trim this out? Um, I can leave it as a contour and region. Uh, do I want to include everything in one sketch? And at this point, my expectation is you're starting to put a few more things into cut, a cut extrude feature. Um, not necessarily everything has to be broken out, but you're getting more comfortable with um, dividing things up, make, make the outside shape, be able to generate this, uh, this geometry and then add additional geometry to it, whether it's cutting or, um, or adding additional bosses. All right, so we're in the sketch. We have an ellipse um, command. Um, we start drawing, and of course it gives us the, uh, the axes and dimensions, but nothing said about 30 degrees. So. Um, since this is still dash, 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 it's asking me to drag, All right? So as I drag, that's going to set the position and the node points, and the ellipse is able to stretch and to rotate, All right? So 
One of the relations that I need is a horizontal or vertical. And then we'll jump into the overall height was the 140. And then that makes the minor axis 70. So just had the thought that if we get to, uh, to a point where we can do equations, um, this is probably a really good example of where I would want to do an equation. Whatever value you enter for um, uh, for the uh, the major axis, then it would automatically generate this minor axis. So if we we're making these different sizes, uh, we could use an equation to uh, to control it. Okay, so let me have it. There we go. All right, so horizontal. And then this one was 150, and it gave me the half, so try again. And go ahead to the to the minor axis, and said that was 75. All right, so the node points will stay. Whether I if I trim this out, then the node points are there as a calculation. Uh, just be aware that if you do trim, so I'm in the trim to closest, that node point is going to stay. There may be other geometry that will be kind of ghosted in. Uh, but like I said, keep in mind that you don't have to. Uh, probably the other, other side that would make it a little, well, probably more complicated is to do the pull down and go to a partial ellipse, which is going to ask you for the major, the minor, and then draw how much of the ellipse you want. So that's a little little strange, but if you didn't want to trim or um, you know go through that uh, that process, you're still going to end up with four node points because that is the definition. That's how it's calculating the major minor axis and then the um, the connecting points in between. All right, so I'm not going to worry about untrimming. So we're going to go back into the uh, the features. Extrude boss base. It automatically goes to cell, uh, selected contours when it sees that we have uh, this intersecting geometry. So I should be able to pick my two contours. Ah, one's a one's an open. So since I made that choice, um, I can probably stay with the um, the complete contour, but the second I'm going to have to go to regions. All right. Since it didn't like that, I'm thinking all regions now. And it, oh, it jumped directly into thin feature. So thin feature was the very first sheet metal. All right. So thin feature allows to give a wall thickness and treat this as if it was just going to be a very thin line around that open geometry. So once it sees that open geometry and jumps into thin feature, as long as I haven't accepted yet, um, I can uncheck it and it will go back to my geometry. So that's probably why it didn't allow me the selections. Um, but uh, with the uh, the thin feature, um, we can set a material thickness and put in some uh, some automatic bends. But the other side of that is that uh, the sheet metal module inside of our parts is much more functional than thin feature ever was. So it's it's one of those. There's there's some places where we'll use it, um, but we just won't use it very often. All right, and then the thickness was six millimeters. Oh, and since I'm in inches, we will be transitioning over again. And I did not type in millimeters. Oh yeah, 236. So six mm should um, make it the right. But since I um, was telling it 175 millimeters, it's actually 175 inches right now. So this will be interesting. 70 mm, 150 mm, okay so except for my um, My 
uh, my, my geometry being very small now and my dimensions being way out here, I did was able to recover. And now when I go to six millimeters, uh, it looks a little bit better on the, uh, the thickness. All right, so we'll see what other downstream problems that, that creates. So into custom, edit document units. I'm going to go to millimeters, grams, and seconds just to uh, double check. Don't need millimeters out to three decimal places. So I'm going to change them to two. And we'll go back into the next sketch. All right, so jumping back to our detail, we have the little notch, um, 2.5 millimeters high, and then a 40 millimeter. Um, oh, that's calling it out as a diameter. So we'll switch that over. And this one I will take kind of the, the strategy of the, um, uh, the lace gasket where we just draw a portion and specifically the portion that we need. So a center point arc will pull from that edge. Didn't quite go the way I expected it to. So I'm going to keep dragging until it gives me the desired result. We'll put some dimensions on this as five millimeters width, 20 millimeters, and then um, we had two and a half millimeters for the height. And these can be equal. All right, so um, I get to this point and then I'm not sure. So dragging shows me that this is able to move back and forth. I've got everything pretty well restrained. So I would jump into the midpoint and the origin and make those vertical. That makes everything defined except for this endpoint, which is going to connect after I do the pattern, is going to connect back to the, to the, um, uh, the tail of the, um, the other side. Okay, so all of that gets selected. Uh, we have a total of 18 in our pattern. So this is going to be the circular sketch pattern. It goes back to 0, 0. We tell it that there's 18. Um, I think we're okay on the dimensions, but if I don't do any of these or I hadn't set or already set some of the other dimensions, I might be able to go with dimension radius. Probably wouldn't do the angular spacing. You know, we already had that, so Let's see, we'll grab that endpoint, drag it back till I see the, um, uh, the concentric, which is basically going to merge those points, and that completes the pattern. So in this case, when you see these complicated patterns, try to identify the, the simplest elements. What can I get away with uh, as basic geometry and create a pattern on this rather than trying to draw individuals? Um, with these being vertical, well, well, we'll go ahead and extrude this out. Um, the, uh, the other technique that I tried with the, uh, the lace gasket, I don't know that that's going to be, um, be a, a good what if scenario. So let's, uh, let's try it. So if we are, I think that's going to be 22 and a half, 20 on the radius and the, Oh, missed that one. And I'll go midpoint. And five millimeters wide. And it's still going to be a circular pattern. All right, we're going to have 18. All right, so another interesting, well, that's a really cool shape, but no, I don't think I want to... Um, uh, to try and pick all of those uh, those entities for contours and regions. So that goes to 40. And, hmm, actually, maybe that one will end up vertical. So something should be able to move. Okay. That's one of those uh, weird instances where you just drag something and it solves itself. It couldn't do it before for some reason, but as soon as you try to move something, then it's, oh, I got it figured out now.
Um, so I don't really know what the, what the explanation for that one is. So if I was going to try to cut extrude this, we don't have any thin features this time, so we'll try again. Extrude cut. Uh, we'll go through all. The selected contour then would be the circle. And then I would pick, yeah, maybe. And other than all of the flickering and flashing and the couple that I missed, or got too many of. Nope, that was the contour. That was the region. Oh, so close. <laughs> So did I deselect the circle? Well, everything inside of the circle. Ah. Well, I don't want to make it, um, well, let's go ahead and allow it to cut. Based on what I selected, and then we'll just share this, share the sketch and extrude cut. And then this one would have to be the circle. And even though I didn't really want to do two features, it, it makes the solution, but I don't know that it's, um, okay, it's not better than the first one. <laughs> yes? I wondered whether you could use jaws. It looks to me like you could draw a circle and just do a jog, and I couldn't find any way to that. I, I haven't ever tried to jog a circle. I don't know if it's uh, restricted to linear or there's another what-if scenario coming, I can tell. So let's go ahead and suppress. And so if you haven't um, uh, watched the, um, the hide and, and suppress what's going on, um, hide basically says, I want to see something, and then I don't want to see something. Suppress says, I want to treat it as if it doesn't exist. I not only don't want to see it, I don't want it to participate. All right, so in this case, I'm suppressing these because these are my what-if scenarios. And we're going, what it's giving me the ability to do is if all of these were unsuppressed, they would be in conflict with each other because I already have a hole with all those little notches and I generated another set and I'm about to generate another set. Maybe. All right, so we'll go in, pick up the, uh, the diameter. And then uh, what's it going to be? Tools, sketch tools, and jog line. Hmm. And it's specifically sketch line to add a, a jog to that segment. So it's not going to allow the arc. So sure, there's other other ways to um, to get through it. Um, you know, maybe we would draw the little box and then pattern the box. But I think at some point we're going to come back to that pattern where, rather than drawing 18 individual items. We want to um, to have that functionality of, um, of the pattern to uh, to work from. All right, so then when I'm ready, unsuppress. And this becomes kind of the basis of the configurations. So if I had different sizes or I had different geometry, I could come over to this third tab and add a configuration that would control the different suppression states based on the, the, the part. So um, I do like configurations. If you've uh, watched up through any of the, the chapter five, uh, configurations are a very powerful tool and the sooner if you think you're going to use them the sooner you start kind of tinkering and experimenting the better all right anything that goes into production or has different elements and even on the uh, the cam software there's been times where um, I've had uh, parts that were facing opposite directions parts that needed to be in different orientations but I wanted the same part to be in the assembly same part to be in the cam program and to do that would set a configuration that made it just enough different, even though it was the same, gave it a different name that the cam could recognize and uh, apply geometry to. So as a, an instance, uh, let's go um, add a configuration for um, with the, uh, the notches. 
and then on the default we could suppress all of these and the well let's see i think i did that backwards probably did it backwards so highlight that one so that one is with the notch and then one with the um, the holes all right so whenever i create a, a new configuration it takes the current all of the current unsuppressed items adds it to that mix so the default will still be blank the notch will still have this geometry and when i add the uh, the holes to the mix which are 45 and 50 so not quite we'll go center line horizontal infinite length and okay and then switch over to vertical Okay, and four times 24. Okay, so the upper was 45. Slide 50. Do the select, control, select, and mirror. In mirror features extrude cut and we'll go through all all right so here's the um, the takeaway default has nothing because it, I suppressed the one of them the holes is everything the notch is without the holes so I can turn things on and turn things off based on the um, the geometry so if three of these stacked up to make our, our part in assembly or three of these were, were stacked up, I could bring the same part into the assembly and instances of the same part and, um, and then control these configurations rather than making three separate parts. Three separate parts is not a big deal. How about 30? How about 300? All right. Do I want 300 individual SLD PRT files to keep track of? Or would I rather have a big long list in here? And probably the, the big long list in here even is going to become daunting at some point. We're going to have to categorize it or break it down one more level, either by size or something should jump out as um, the, um, uh, the attribute that we really want to, uh, to track. So here's what's happening as we go through. And under the default, everything is suppressed. The sketch is hidden. And under the, um, the holes then, Everything is unsuppressed except for my, my test case. At some point, since um, my what if scenario was, eh, I'm going to go with option one rather than my trial for option two, I would want to go back and delete those. Right? I don't want to leave that geometry hanging there um, after it's been kind of uh, disproven or uh, did not become the choice. All right. So if we, um, we'll. I'll try to remember to come back to this when we get over to the assemblies and we'll do that as the, um, the example. All right, so find my way over to chapter two. And we'll go to 18. All right. Okay, so to pattern or not to pattern? We have the interesting geometry, one and a half inches. Um, looking at this, there's not really a good place to start, but since the radiuses are picking up off of the hole locations, um, really any one of the hole locations would be a good good starting point. So, all right. So I think I'm going to just go with the center, so I can do the pattern separately, not have the the pattern maybe direct directly related to the origin. And after I did that, these are inch. So front plane, well, let's do one on the top plane just to be different. All right, so the whole diameter, one inch. Now, oh. not showing up real well. Five holes at one inch, radius of one inch, and then 1.25 on the bottom. OK. 
Okay, and then um, not quite vertical, but equal. And we'll go two inches. All right, so I could um, I could generate this uh, with construction lines. We could um, uh, let's see, those are going to have to be tangencies. So yeah, I don't know that that's going to be uh, be a good way to go either. All right, well we'll let the tangencies uh, do their thing. So um, spacing of one and a half inches, and uh, I want to uh, reverse the direction. Total of four instances. And let's go ahead and dimension the X spacing, and that'll be okay. Now this is still going to be able to to move left and right, not up and down. And don't know if it'll rotate yet, but I suspect that uh, since this is uh, fully defined, well, it did not get a horizontal, so I can keep it from rotating by adding a horizontal. All right, so center point arc. Come off of vertical, back around. All right, so if we'd used the uh, the tangent arcs, it might have um, might have been a little bit better. Nah, probably not. But I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots. Oh, we do have one more that's a tangent arc. So since these are going to come to a point and can make a turn, are not a continuous smooth arc, we're going to have to make them tangent. So select the line, control select the arc, and each of those is going to get a tangency, and I think I missed. So even though it's very subtle that that is a change of direction, that is still not going to produce tangency. So we have to apply it. Oh, and I told it that I was in the top, so We'll get that in place. So these two are equal. So I wish I could say I had a had a plan. This is an evolving process. I kind of see the see the relation, or I kind of guess what the next relation is. Um, you know, sometimes it works out, and sometimes not. If we highlight the parts and we're getting that visual feedback, I picked a tangent arc, so I know I got tangency then I can go back and pick the next tangent. We'll add a dimension. Oh, I got one too many. And still can't read that one. So radius of four inches. And this was the 1.25. All right, so we're two inches. And either I haven't looked at this one before, or it's another one that's missing a dimension because we don't have an angle. Let's see, what was it doing? Oh, there it is, the half inch to the center. Okay. Well, that makes it easier, except I got too much there. Still got too much. There we go. Get rid of that point. All right, 0.5. So by process of elimination, adding a dimension here, a relation there, we're going to draw this into being a fully defined sketch to, um, to generate our, um, our solid model. There we go. All right, symmetry, symmetry about all axes. So this is kind of like the uh, the last one where we needed um, the base circles to have a location to get started. We're going to need these uh, these circles because the tangencies and the arcs, everything else is pretty much unknown. We don't have center points. We don't have any information except for the location of those circles. So we're going to start with what we know and work um, work towards um, filling in the blanks as we go. And millimeters. All right, so front plane sketch. 
And anytime we're in symmetry, I did not mean to grab the midpoint so I can turn it off. I do want infinite length. We can drop the horizontal on the origin, accept it, go back for the vertical. And since I didn't get those to be construction lines, we'll switch those over. All right, so picking whichever quadrant. Uh, let's see, we have a diameter of 20. And except for the pattern, we really don't have a way to, to mirror. We could circular pattern this, but I don't know that that's going to be any easier than going mirror entities, select, control, select, control, select, mirror entities, toss up, maybe. All right, so for location, 30 and 40. So the pattern wouldn't work anyway because, well, 30 and 40 is not, um, let's see, on on the circle. Well, we'd have to um, do a little uh, of figuring on that one. All right, so same thing. We'll go with the um, the center point arc. Uh, go the opposite side to my dimensions. And so this has a little bit of an arc and is going to come back that way. And then the, the choice is, do I want to try to mirror all of this or just part of it? I think I just want to mirror part of it. So we'll do the select, control, select thing again. All right. And then these can be tangent arcs. And we'll go from point to point. And because of the symmetry, missed. Because of the symmetry, I should get most of this um, to pick up the, um, the tangencies. All right. So I didn't apply a tangent to that side, but because these were symmetric across their, their representative axes, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get that tangency um, automatically. All right. So radius of 20. Uh, radius of 120. And last, um, radius of 60 or 80. 60. Okay. So question is, do I want to include those, those holes? Um, there may be reasons, again, that um, in one, one version of this part, the 20 millimeter holes are clearance. And in another version, they are threaded. In another version, they're countersunk or something. All right, so if that was the case, one of the, the techniques that I'll, I'll throw out there is if I wanted to treat those circles as the, uh, the base geometry but put them in as a hole wizard, I'll send them to be construction geometry to make construction circles so that I have them, but I don't have to use them. And we extrude out 7.25. And that's a little interesting that it zoomed out that far for the construction. All right, that has kind of the same effect, but it's a little more, well, say, hard coded than going back in and saying I may want to use them elsewhere. And if I go back and edit the feature, jump into the selected contour and pick the um, the region or the body oh no I wanted the uh, the contour there we go I can get the same result but now those um, they're still objects so in a shared sketch they could still perform whatever function I wanted to perform the construction circles are not going to participate all right, they can't generate um, can't generate geometry at that point. Okay, we'll have the sketch. Oh nope, edit the feature this time. And if I clear that out, I'll notice that 
the sketch icon change from the little polygon thing to back to the line sketch. All right, both of those will uh, will work. All right, so uh, 30 by 50 on the, uh, the rectangle. So this would be a good place for the center rectangle. And over on the left, I kind of got like the uh, the from corners. Occasionally, I'll do the uh, the midpoints. And then again, your choice whether you include the uh, the fillets that are called out inside of the sketch, or as a separate sketch feature. All right, so I don't know that um, workflow. There's not any great time savings doing one over the other. Uh, let's see, these were. Uh, all fillets radius of can't read it so radius of five. So if we go into the um, the fillets, set the five. And one of the things that that comes up is this isn't really a mirrored entity. Uh, but you do have to watch adding the fillets to a an item that was mirrored uh, because it'll tell you that it's going to break the symmetry relation. And when you see that, you may just say it's going to be easier to go ahead and um, uh, create a, um, a fillet feature as opposed to including it in the uh, in the sketch. Okay. Okay, so this one's kind of hard to um, uh, to see. I, I think even in um, uh, one of the scans or in the uh, the canvas, I took a, a slightly different um, picture. Is it this group or the next group? Anyway, one of these um, with the um, the dimensions. Basically, you're having facets across the uh, the top. And it's telling you that again the the uh, the, the equal sign on the um, on the axis is telling you that it's symmetrical about that axis. All right, so we can use that to draw a half, and then uh, come back. So it looks like one, two, three segments over to the uh, to the arc. Um, the dimensions: 35, the radius of 110. Um, that doesn't quite look that like it shares the um, the center. Well, 110, so yes, it would. Um, picking up, so pretty much that is a, a good um, a good location to to start the sketch at the origin is have that circle um, generate the uh, the first geometry. Okay, so in um, in millimeters. And again, even even though the symmetrical is in one axis, we'll go symmetry, vertical, infinite length, place it. And it didn't go blue, but once I drag, picks it up. And then we're going to have a radius of 30. So let's see, I'm going to zoom up on that a little bit. Okay, I thought I was dragging. Apparently not. Still thought I was dragging. Apparently not. I right, we'll just bar it over. Try and get the whole thing on the screen here. So 110, 110. Okay, 220, and then I want to remind myself that that's a radius, so I'm going to switch over on the leader. All right, and then we're going to have, that comes off of the angle, up and over, and a little bit closer. And 20 by 30, 
and then 35 by 70, 40 to the top. Okay, we can do that. So that'll give us our first position. And then we had a 70, so nope, didn't want that one. Pretty close. And I think it was 35. Okay, so we got that much of it. Oh, and then the uh, the circle. Uh, the circle was also 30. Okay, so that gives me all of the um, the upper geometry. All right, so the bottom. Now I kind of have that rectangular shape. So let's go ahead and um, get started on the mirror. Oh, missed. Try again. Okay, so now I can con con concentrate on the bottom. All right, so let's see. We had 40 and 40. So another assumption that I have to make is where this hits the uh, the quadrant is where I will have this circle. Um vertical and then we're not really positioned, that's my best guess. All right, so we have a radius of 30 and a radius of 20 on the other one, so we'll go 60. All right, so since that one's going to fight me for linear, I'll go back into the leaders and tell it that um, it can be a radius. All right, and I'll stay with the uh, the center. And that was a height of 40. Oh, it did give me the um, the 42. Oh, that was 40 to the base. All right, so 40, and then a height of 40. Making sure I wasn't confusing myself there. All right, we jump in. So 40 from 40 up to, and then um, 70 on the uh, the length, or the half length anyway. And then from center, so this is starting to look like one that would be a, a good case for um, for some trimming. I was going to try and do it all as uh, contours and regions, but yeah, it's looking a little on the uh, the crazy side. All right, so um, thickness, all fillets, radius of five. Um, I think we'll put those in after. All right, so worst case scenario on the contours and regions. Let's see what happens. Pick our geometry. That one has the pattern. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Saw all of those lines, got a little confused, and uh, turned out it was uh, just a couple of selections. So thickness of five. And then the radiuses were all five. So uh, we'll go into fill it. And we'll see what this uh, picks up, at least the uh, the interiors I can grab. And then we'll probably just go back and add the two outsides. Okay, so other than the, the sketch being hard to read and having to make those couple of assumptions, um, really wasn't as, as bad as I thought it was going to be. So 21. And the circle. Our wheel shouldn't be um, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let me bring it up on the other screen. All 
All right, so strategy wise, um, the two circles intersecting offsets, probably a pattern. If we stay with the uh, the contours and regions again, uh, might not have to do a, a whole lot of trimming. All right, so um, metric part. And we'll set the uh, the diameter so it scales, 240. Um, let's go ahead and uh, generate the center, center lines. Uh, horizontal, infinite length, accept, and then go over to vertical, accept. Okay, so for whatever reason, didn't go to blue. Uh, let's see the inside diameter, radius of 30, and then um, a radius of 100 to the outside. So 60. And then I'll probably go with the, um, the center point arc, and we'll generate one quadrant. Radius of 100. And then as long as the line intersects, I'll have enough for the, um, the region. Horizontal. Let's see, the ribs are 20 across all. The, so we'll go to the um, opposite side of the center line. Yep. And... Did not want to select that one, so here's another instance where I can go back to the leaders. And even though the terminology is not 100% correct for what we're doing, it um, we're switching over to diameter. It'll be uh, it'll be close enough. And then we have enough for our pattern. Four items. Um, let's see. Shouldn't have to dimension the radius. Now we'll go with. Uh, Hey, it's getting better. Went, went fully defined, so I'll take it. And then um, diameter of 30 in the center. All right. Um, let's see. All fillets were 10 radius, so there's too many uh, too many fillets in the corners to, to really mess with. Um, the simple trim would have been uh, to just go ahead and knock the corners out. Let's see what it looks like as a contour and region, and then we'll go back and uh, trim out the, um, the interior. Oh, this is just going to be an extrude. Okay, so that and that. I don't know. That was still easier than going through the trim process. All right, thickness of 16. All right, so the thing to keep in mind is that um, we have made a selection to do the contour and region. If I decide I want to go back and do the trim entities, and we take out those um, those segments, the feature, unless something drastically changes, the feature is still going to see this as a contour and region. The um, Oops, I went back into the sketch. Let's go back into the feature. Um, the regions are still, well, mostly valid, except that uh, region 2 is now region 1 and basically a duplicate. So if I were to remove that, it shouldn't cause any problems because everything's connected now. And then if I wanted it to go completely away, we delete everything out of the selected contours, and it goes back to a standard sketch. So you should be comfortable seeing either one of those terminologies, making either one of those selections based on the complexity of the, the sketch, based on, on your geometry. Make sure it makes sense to, to you what your strategy is, is going to do for you. All right, so fill it. And we're at 10 millimeters, so that's good. And then we're going to grab everything interior and accept it. All right, so I like that little pop-up. Don't have to go through and select however many fillets there were. Well, four times six, yeah, 16. Don't have to select all of those fillets. All right.
right, what's next? And it's still not letting me drag. All right, so subtract or minus. All right, the table. What's after that one? Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to say I'll jump to the next one, but the next one's not any easier. <laughs> All right, so whenever you're looking at these tables, keep in mind that this is a drawing module table. We're not going to generate this out of the part. We're not interested in um, uh, pretty much um, the information in this format. We want the information so that we can determine what we're telling it to do over here, which ones are the quarter inch, because if we go whole wizard, then we're going to pick four different whole wizard features. If we draw all of these as cut extrude circles, we still need to know their locations and the sizes. Um, the oddball is the, uh, let's see, now we got the slot. No, I guess that's, um, that's all okay on the sizes. So again, with the, uh, the complexity of the, uh, the outside shape, I don't know that I really want to put all of this in one sketch. Um, I, I could do everything, um, listed here, shown here, but um, I think it's going to be, um, be easier to, uh, to manage uh, with the, um, the separate features. So new part, um, this is an inch. And um, the, um, uh, the table automatically generates this XY. So when you're looking at any of the uh, the locations, X location, Y location, it's automatically in reference to this ordinate, this um, this X Y uh, symbol in the uh, the bottom left corner. Now that could be anywhere, but it also makes sense that it was in the in the bottom left. So we'll draw from that location. So we'll give it an up and an over, and I'm going to kind of work on the scale a little bit before we get too far. So 335, okay, about 3.35, and then an overall of 6.39. Okay, so that gives me um, the basic scaling up, over, have kind of the down angle, and Let's go back and visit, revisit the uh, the jog line since it didn't work on the circle. We'll uh, take a look at what it's um, what it should be doing, and then I missed. And um, with that little bit of a tail, this would automatically go into a uh, contour and region. It would see that overhang, and if I didn't correct for it, I would have to select the region, and the contour really wouldn't be valid because it it's you know, it's overlap. It's over overhanging the uh, the edge. On the other side is if I leave that, I'm going to automatically get a thin feature. So the importance of defining the sketch is the result is very dependent on some of um, some of our selections. So I'm going to drag back to where I see the concentricity, and that's going to put it in position uh, to be a uh, closed contour. So 3.9. And we already have the overall, 182. And we had 238 degrees on the angle, so we should be able to go to the outside on our smart dimension. Oh, 238.29. And let's see, location. Let me pick that out. One of these is going to a, uh, a virtual sharp, and so it looks like the 161. Okay, so we said we wanted to, um, to jog. So tools, sketch tools, we'll go into the jog line. We pick the, um, the starting point, drag out, and it's going to Create that box and trim at the same time. So 0.75, uh, 0.55, 
And then looking for a depth, we don't have a depth, so it looks a little bit bigger than the, uh, the gap. So maybe a little bit deeper, we'll go with one inch. And there's another one of those instances that, um, since I did the reset on the, uh, the 2017, I, I, everything's marked for the, uh, the drawing now. So in this case, I would at least put the, um, the ob round on it, make this an inspection dimension so that we can go back and say, yes, it's working. No, probably need to, to verify that, um, that geometry. All right, so that will give me the, um, the extrude 0.5, and I'll reverse it just because I can. All right, so keep in mind that if uh, for some reason you wanted the part to go the other way, the toggle box is going to let you change its direction in relation to that plane. All right, so a lot of times for the manufacturing, I'll have the part going. Well, what would end up being Z negative or its reference uh, to the plane negative. All right, so we're not worried about the uh, the fillets just yet. Um, we'll go into the uh, to the hole wizard. So let's see if I right click. No, nope. uh, S key. Now on the S key, you have a hole wizard in the bottom left, depending on um, uh, how this is uh, is organized. Um, that's one of the, the ones that um, I use the S key for regularly is the, the, quick, um, the quick path to the, uh, to the whole wizard. All right, so this is the same as coming up to the command manager and clicking on whole wizard. And because I pre-selected the face, it already knows where I'm sketching. So we're telling it that it is a, um, a simple hole, that it is in inches. And we're going to go with fractional drill sizes. And if you don't recognize the uh, the decimal values, they added the nice show decimal values next uh, underneath the uh, the list. And that will put all the, the decimal equivalents out to the side. So there is my quarter inch. We're going to be through all, no near side or far side countersink. Positions, uh, we have... Looks like um, one, two, and the yellow on yellow is not exactly the, the best selection. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.88, and nope, didn't want that one. 0 0.264, uh, 488, and three. Okay, so there are going to be a couple up here. Maybe. And what was the last one? Six and a quarter, point two. Okay, so then in the bottom corner. All right. So this is a good case to use instead of the smart dimension, which is going to stack up a bunch of dimensions. This would be a good place to go to the ordinate dimension. If you recognize the horizontal or vertical, um, I don't ever stop to think about it. I just go to the ordinate. It's going to ask you to select a zero, and then we're going to place dimensions on each of the items that we're selecting, or each of the points that we place. Um, since this one is 0 0.25 and 0.25, then they can be vertical. And this one and this uh in the corners can be horizontal. All right, so we had uh, 0 0.25. We'll go back and double click. And then um, 5, 3, 10, we haven't done yet. Uh, 0.88 and 4.88. Now I got an extra one in there then. Okay, so I'll we'll take that one out if we need to add it back in. We always can uh, generate another point. And 6.14. All right, so height-wise then, 
Oh, about to slip into the uh, the habit, smart dimension. I want to go over to the ordinate, set the zero. And set the locations. All right, so 0.25. And then um, A2, make sure it was the 310. And then the, uh, the far one, 2. Okay, 4.88, 3.65, and then the point eight was 2.64. Um, it's interesting that it drug that one up, but we can just drag it back. All right, so there's the whole locations. So again, the advantage of the whole wizard is that if I decided that um, instead of a quarter inch, maybe a clearance hole, that I needed these to be tapped, I can go in and pretty much instantly change this over to a quarter 20 and say through all, no, um, no near side, far side counter sinks, double check the positions, and now they're all tapped holes. They could all be countersunk holes. All right, so since they were similar or uh, pretty much simple, we'll go with um, go with those geometries. All right, so S key, whole wizard. Um, let's see, B1 was um, oh, B1 and B2, so they're right there. So pretty close to, the, to each other, and that diameter was 0.4. Oops, so um, let's stay with the simple. And all drill sizes still want to show the uh, the decimal equivalents, and we're probably not going to get exactly to point four, so we're going to find something really close. Oh, <laughs> nope, that's forty thousandths. That's not going to work. All right, so three ninety seven three thousandths shy, or four oh four four thousandths heavy. Um, let's see from a Machining standpoint and not knowing what this does, I think I would rather be at the maximum material condition, which is the smallest hole. If I'm having to take a guess, I'm an error on the side. I can always open that hole up more. I can add the material back in later. So we'll go with the 397. And if it's plus or, five, plus or minus 5 on the tolerance zone, then I'm on the low side of the tolerance zone. All right, so I can make some justifications for going to, to the 3.97. And then the position, uh, since I didn't pre-select, it's asking me for a 3D sketch. We're going to stay away from the 3D sketches. So select the face. It'll let you into the point selections. Oh, and then these are simple enough that I'm not going to worry about the ordinate since I already slipped into that mode. And we're going to be 0.68. And the next one, 1.28. And then the uh, the height, 0.56. And I think it was 1.29. Okay, so that one goes that way. All right, so C1. Um, only one of C, only one of D, only one of E. All right, so um, C goes to 0.29, and it was up here somewhere. So staying with the S key, whole wizard, um, all sizes. And there again, what is going to be the, the closest? 295, 281, oh, L, 29. All right, so we have a letter drill that is on size. No near side, no far side. Positions. All right, so C1, 2.92. And 1.76. Uh, 
and then D is a 0.33, and it's just a little bit above. Okay, so same thing. All right, so 0.33, um, we got 332 or 328. So again, two thousandths below or two thousandths above. Can I go with the uh, the smaller one? All right. Again, in the whole uh, case of a hole, smaller means more material, so maximum material condition. And we'll put it in position up there. Two point six six and 3.16 and we'll accept that one so the time consuming tedious part of the whole wizard is that we get this great functionality but i have to enter each one um, i don't know that it would be much better trying to organize drawing whatever 10 10 individual circles and putting dimensions on them but um, I do have uh, I do have that functionality. So E1 is a 0 0.42. So I guess from a um, the other other side of the um, design is that having access to this decimal, having access to the manufacturing information um, that is this drill going to have to or is this hole going to have to be interpolated on a cnc to make it exactly that size or are we going to be in a tolerant zone so that i can make um, a decision based on i want it to be 4 4.2 413 is really on the small side in this case i'd rather be two thousandths over than seven thousandths under i can make that decision i can look at uh, where this is going to to be used and um, you know, decide can it be a drilled, just a drilled hole, or am I going to need to, um, you know, make a make a, a size that is going to require a, a different um, machining uh, machining process. All right, three three eight. And one point one three. That looks like E1. Did I miss one? E1. Yeah, that's the 0.42. Okay, so G1. So that takes us over to F1. All right, another uh, 0.33. We're going to go to 0.32. And that would be one that I would really have to take a hard look at. Um, could, could these be split and could I combine them when they're that close? If this is just clearance, or if it's got to be, um, you know, a tighter fit, which one uh, could I get away with um, combining? Um, otherwise, you know, it's loading up one more drill, it's doing one more operation, but at the same same instance, it's one more drill and it's one more operation. All right, so I got into sketch mode there. Simple. All right, so going back to the three twos. Same thing. Would I rather be four thousandths under or three thousandths over at that kind of range? Um, you know, could I split these? Uh, you know, go up to the three two eight and make this the same as whatever the uh, D one was. All right, so that'd be a good um, good decision. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with the same justification. It's not too far out of the tolerance range to go to a 4,000 smaller hole from the uh, the 0 0.32 as opposed to going 3,000 over. All right, and then it's going to be up here somewhere. Go back into the dimensions. And 3.71. And 3.43. All right, and then last is the G. 
All right, so we'll double check, it's 0.73. So based on our decisions, uh, well, what, 11, 11 thousandths smaller or 4 thousandths bigger? I guess we're going 4 thousandths bigger. Oops, and I jumped out of it, which is probably a good thing because I haven't been back into these. Uh, when the, um, the whole wizard generates its geometry, it generates two sketches. One is that point location that we've been defining. The other one is the sketch profile that basically becomes a revolve. You can edit these sketches, just be careful um, that you understand what the, uh, the implications are. Uh, you're probably better off editing the feature, at least uh, initially. Uh, there are several places where going into the, um, uh, into the, the whole wizard sketch uh, is a little bit more functional. So I'm not going to say don't do it. Do it with the um, uh, kind of the air of caution on your on your side if you don't follow what uh, what's going on in the geometry um, then just go through the um, through the standard and set the parameters out of its property manager all right so that's all the whole locations and I've done way too much on this one without on the uh, work, working without the net so I'm going to go ahead and save it all right, so the um, the slot, we can go into the sketch geometry, pick up the slot, and I've got it set to center point, so that's fine. Whoops, got way too much on that one. Yeah, it did pick up vertical, and so we said the bottom. All right, we won't drag that. Okay, I still won't drag that. <laughs> All right, make sure I know what I'm selecting here. One point six six and one point one three and point three eight on the radius. Um, position four point four eight. And that one can extrude cut through. All right, so the um, the square has um, one and a half. and 1.3 off the edge. And from a manufacturing point, uh, round tools do not cut square corners. Um, if you want to incur the additional cost of having this put on a wire EDM to make those, those corners very small, um, that's a decision that um, gets built into the cost of the part. But the reality is that um, I brought it up um, yeah, the other the other day that you know we're not 3D printing everything yet, so 3D printing could this could pretty much be a, a square corner without too much um, too much effort. But as long as we're doing subtractive manufacturing um, in these uh, in this geometry, we're going to have to account for some type of of corner uh, treatment. All right, so the easiest would be to put the fillet on it and picking a size that is appropriate to the uh, to the hole or to the clearance. All right, so one of the things is to know a little bit about the tooling. And I didn't stop, oh, half an inch thick. Um, so I could probably go fairly easy with a, um, a one eighth. Um, if I looked in a tool catalog, I would see that a quarter inch end mill has a standard length of cut of three quarters. And I could base some of my decision on that sizing. Now I could go smaller. Um, into those uh, into those corners and into that fillet, but you know I have to have extra length tooling. Yes. Well, it's inch and a half by inch and a half is a pretty big brooch. So yeah, you could um, you could potentially brooch it, 
And depending on what the other manufacturing process, if this is on a CNC, then I have to have clearance for the brooch to go into the corners and and um, and hog those out. So um, good point. You know, part of our decision tree is to go through those what ifs of well, you know, do I have a brooch that size in my tool in our in our tool grip? Can I can I get one? Can I get one for under a thousand dollars? And how many of these am I going to make to justify the the return for custom tooling? Um, so you know that that whole decision tree up up until this point we kind of run into the same thing here um this one isn't so critical because i can set it up on end if i had to as a second operation and the design for manufacturer says well i'm just going to run an end mill through that that corner and and make those sharp um, if this is taking any kind of load i'm injecting stress risers in it so on the engineering side and looking at the uh, the simulation and making it way more complicated than it needs to be for a, a simple example is how much load am I going to be able to put on that before it starts to fracture through that corner and migrate either over to the hole or migrate over to the slot, depending on which the direction of the load. All right, so one of my preferred is um, uh, kind of a dog ear. And um, I'll... Um, I've shown this in the cam class, and this is my my favorite um, solution. We'll go to a three-point arc. Um, the quick solution, if this was going to be an entirely manually made part, manual machined uh, on a mill, then we would probably go with pick the appropriate size and put a circle that we can put a drill in the corner, and that would provide an overrun. If I'm already on the intention of putting this on a CNC, on a computer controlled machine, then let's see, I'm gonna give it 10 thousandths clearance to the, uh, to the corner. Um, said that I could uh, reasonably put a, an eighth inch in there, so I'm gonna leave it on the high side, 0.13 or a little bit bigger, and then we'll just set an angle. So the advantage of, um, of this method is that if I needed a little clearance, maybe something's coming into contact or I'm getting close to an edge, I can adjust this angle and have it kick over and still have clearance back to that edge. As opposed to just overrunning, you know, and at that point, maybe I decide to overrun it. Maybe it is a true 90 degree angle and I can overrun. I can see those what if scenarios of where the interferences would arise and um, what kind of geometry I'd have to generate. All right, so center line. Uh, for the assignment, if you've already turned this in, you don't have to do this. <laughs> this is uh, an example of um, you know going going through the process, coming up with a solution for you know that that what if scenario, or um, we've determined a manufacturing process, and now I have to make decisions based on um, based on that direction and through all okay and then if i really want to put fancy uh, get fancy then i put uh, maybe a 30 thousandths radius on each of those corners so it has a smooth transition now it's going <laughs> we're done <laughs> all right so question is what do we do on this end all right since we didn't have a length um, and uh, if we have to we still have a manual mill in the shop or um, i'm gonna uh, was the the question the other night is could we line up um, uh, five or six of these at a time and blow through them if the tolerances are open enough and we can make the alignment and fixture there we can um, uh, we can go through multiple parts in the um, in the mix all right so save that one and we'll be on to some more mirroring all right looking at our last uh, last part in chapter two we're going to draw one quadrant except for kind of the uh, the little loop um decision is still let's see this one is in metric and we're going to be going across both axes so center line horizontal infinite length And then um, accept, switch back over to vertical, put it in position. 
All right, so most of the time I've done the um, uh, the trim strategy on this. Let's see what it looks like with contours and regions and how um, how fun it can get. All right, so that kind of goes that way. And then from the uh, the center out, that kind of goes that way. And we'll set it to for construction. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, let's go off of the intersection. And let's get some dimensions before this gets too out of control. Um, so radius of 60 will be 120 on the uh, the diameter. Oh, one, yeah, radius of 80, 160 on the diameter. Okay, and then 30 off of the center line. And from the outside, let's see the small one. All right, pull that up. And the four ribs, there we go, five, ten on all of the offset. Oh, and that adjusted my angle, so we'll go back to the 45 degrees. All right, so I don't know that we've had much uh, cause to dimension between circles, but if I go between the perimeters, it's going to give me the the difference rather than the uh, the centers. So there's my my ten and position will be at one twenty. All right, so this is getting pretty busy pretty fast, but let's go ahead and make some uh, some connections let's see we're almost ready to mirror so the problem with mirroring um, mirroring this is it's not going to go deep enough into the next um, into the next uh, rib for uh, for its geometry so if I do that pie shaped and we go to the center line Instead of picking the uh, the line geometry, I can go to the points, and the points can be symmetric across that face. So you're not locked into having to select an object or um, you know a, a specific arc or line. You can grab its endpoints and have it do the uh, do pretty much the same thing. All right, so all of that now becomes the mirror. And then we said. Both of those were 10. All right, so now let's see, we have region, region, region. So except for what's happening up here, we're, we're in pretty good shape. Well, let's try it. Um, I went left to right, which means I got the center lines in there. I don't really want the center lines in my selection, and I really don't want that center line in the selection as, as well. All right, so I take out all the center lines that would, would interfere with the uh, the mirror. We'll select the vertical, tell it to mirror the entities. I get all the rest of the uh, the geometry. All right, so what do I do with the angle up here? All right, so kind of like the um, the the lace when we did the uh, the contours and regions on the uh, the lace gasket. If I make this tangent to one, it should be tangent to both, and that radius is 40. So diameter of 80. And then we'll go one more mirror. All right. So at this point, I really want to do the trim thing and get get this not looking so uh, so ugly, but like we saw before, it may not be so bad until we get into it and try it. Oh, I'm still missing. Oh, I got that. I got that. That came up. Oh, the vertical. All right, so I'm missing something vertical in here. Yeah, now I'm leaning towards trim again. <laughs> All right, so we're going to pick one of these. It goes up to the uh, to the intersection. Find a nice convenient spot for it so it's uh, at least visible before I put the dimensions on it.
Oops, grab that. All right, and then this should also be a rib, the 10 millimeter dimension. So yeah, that got uh, a little more complicated. Extrude. Uh, let's see, thickness is 20 millimeters. Selected contours. Let's get back to where we can uh, can find these. And how many little dots is it going to take to find all of this geometry? No, I'm going to miss something. It's just which one and where. Okay, not that, not that. Yes. Okay. I think trim is probably your better option on this one. <laughs> That's kind of uh, kind of crazy on the on the selection. See if it works. All right. So corners. Um, the last is the uh, the fillets. We have um, internal. Doesn't look like there's any at the uh, the sharps. Kind of hard to tell. Um, all fillets and rounds radius of five. So we'll find an internal. And let's go fillet five millimeter. Right. Even if I let it grab all of the geometry, right? I don't know that this is in there, but we come back to that same discussion of how are we going to manufacture this? If these needed to be sharp corners, am I going to be able to put a wire in there and, and go to the sharp corners? Or do I go ahead and give it a, a decent value to, um, uh, to make those cuts? Okay, and we'll stay with the uh, the center line for symmetry. Missed. Uh, let's see. That'll just be a mirror. Um, positioning vertically. We'll go back to the origin, horizontal, and that was also 120. So may not have needed to do that because we can go concentric. And it just needs the um, the diameters, so 12 millimeters. And we'll extrude cut through all. All right, see if I missed anything. That's got it. 